The following episode of the Comics and Crypto podcast is for informational purposes only, and anything expressed by the hosts or their guests is solely their opinion. This podcast does not constitute financial advice, and anyone wishing to invest should seek their own independent financial or professional help. Have fun and enjoy the show. Hi, I'm Sean O'Hare, and I know comics. Hi, I'm Spencer Vogel, and I know crypto. Hi, I'm Kevin Lee Loader, and I don't know sh. This is the Comics and Crypto Podcast. Comics and Crypto, Crypto and Comics, Collectors World in a Digital Age. Comics and Crypto, Crypto and Comics is where the next billionaires will be rich. Comics and Crypto. What is up, everyone, and welcome back. Oh, man. It's been a minute. I haven't Kev, been here for a, is that you? For a hot second. It <laughs> Where is have me. you been, Kev? <laughs> I, I've been he's, working. He's, I've he's been, been in the tunnels for so long. <laughs> I have the black lung pause. Yeah. He has been working really hard behind the curtains. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, exactly. I've been, I've been busy making gold behind the scenes, working on a lot of <laughs> stuff. But it is awesome to see you guys again. Uh, it's been a hot minute. I love. I just it. realized too. Is this the first video of all three of us on screen together? Like, not an interview, oh. just us talking. Oh, it is, wow. huh? It is. Maybe it could it be. It definitely is. It's a possible yeah, a while at least. Wow. Well, yeah, at least it's been at least a while. If nothing this else. This is this is so cool. Big news has happened recently, which is what yeah. we're going to talk about. It is official. Matt Shackman. Shakman. Shackman. 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 Like the love shack baby. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Love Shackman. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Shackman is now the official director of the Fantastic Four. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. This Super is huge. Cool. This is a big yeah. deal, man. Like, yeah. this is if any of you don't know, Matt Shackman is known for directing a lot of episodes for TV, most notably for a show called Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah. Huge fans of show. One of all of our favorite shows. Yes. We love it yeah. very much. He's directed so 43. This is a big deal for him. Yeah. Yeah. He's directed big, 43. This is going into the big leagues. <laughs> yeah. One more time, Sean. You can try again, bud. <laughs> he's directed 43. It's, he's of... so united. <laughs> God, you. F- I have to edit this. <laughs> <laughs> Are we good? Dick. Oh, God. <laughs> Instant regrets. <laughs> Go back to your cage. <laughs> 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 I'm instantly uh. just the worst. <laughs> <laughs> wow, there's so much more fun when we have Kevin here. Oh, I miss this. It's not work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's actually uh. fun. Anyway, Sean, what the f- are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> He's directed 43 of the 150 episodes of Always Sunny in Philadelphia. He's directed one third of the entire. Wow. Is that right? Bro. Wait, 20. Well, that's almost yeah. half, if not almost. Yeah, it's almost half. No, that's one third. 50, less 50, than a third. 50. Yeah, a little less than a third. About one third. <laughs> about one third of Always Sunny's entire series. And yeah. he's also done shows like Mad Men, Fargo, Game of Thrones, Succession, and The Boys. And he also directed yeah. an entire series of WandaVision. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I forgot about that. I don't think I realized that he did all these shows, right. and I love all of them. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. I, yeah. That, that There's a common thread. It makes sense. Yeah, if there's anyone who could help tell the story of dysfunctional family <laughs> it's the man yeah. who directs always sunny in philadelphia <laughs> <laughs> exactly oh that's such a good point oh that's amazing and you know especially like the, the fantastic four have such a bad rep because of yeah. fox I and mean, fox really yeah. single-handedly destroyed it in two different versions <laughs> <laughs> early 2000s and mid 2000s <laughs> yeah so people have a bad taste in their mouth i'm excited that marvel's finally taking over that's a yeah. that's a really cool opportunity for them and they know how sensitive this is i mean this is the really the, the first superheroes for marvel right with mm-hmm. fantastic 401 so yeah. aren't they aren't they called like the first family or something they definitely are the first superhero family but yeah. they're also i mean essentially the first superheroes because yeah. it, under the marvel brand mm-hmm. because that's when they came out in 1961 right that were yeah. the first issue of under Marvel. Um, before that, it was Timely Comics. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. I keep forgetting that. Like before, Fantastic Four won. Like they weren't even Marvel or anything like right. that. Right. Exactly. Yeah, so they were the first crazy. one. Actually, some of our favorite episodes were always sunny that he directed. The Nightman Cometh. The Gang Goes oh. to Jersey. <laughs> the Gang just, Goes just to the Jersey. first one. <laughs> so good, right? Ah! The, gang... Oh! <laughs> the Gang Goes to the Jersey Shore. Great episode. Yes. That one's a great one. 
the gang gets stranded in the woods <laughs> where yeah. they want to go see the Philadelphia Philly yeah. baseball players. <laughs> yeah. So good. And then, of course, one of the best ones, Charlie McDennis, the game of mm-hmm. games. Game of games. Uh. <laughs> so good. So good. <laughs> but yeah, Marvel has a lot of pressure to do this right. Kevin, what are some of the catalysts here to ensure a successful franchise with the Fantastic Four? Man, what do you want to see that- from the film? What do you want to see from the film? If you look back at the original like Fox films and all those, technically they weren't bad as Fantastic Four films go in terms of what they represent. There's like kind of a little bit goofy, but also a little bit, you know, 70s, 60-ish. But the problem is you have to have the right, the right chemistry between the actors. There's a lot that you need to get right with that cast. The casting to me is going to be huge. Because you can make it as goofy as you want, you can make it as dark as you want, but if that cast doesn't like feel real or feel right, a lot of things will go wrong, no matter how well Matt Shackman actually directs it. The cast yeah. is going to be huge. And I think that's another reason why it's taken so long for them to actually get to this point. I think they're they're trying real hard to get the right people for this mm. and get like the right exact Reed Richards, you know, the right Johnny Storm, all of that. Because it, it so, all hinders on this cast more than anything. Have we had any of the cast members announced yet? I don't no. think officially. There's, there's two really strong speculative actors right now that are leading the charge in potentially playing the character. Number one, apparently Marvel came to him and said, we want you to be our actor. This is a recent, recent rumor going around. His name is Penn Bagley, and he plays Joe in the show You. He's the lead actor in the show You. So apparently he's the leading candidate for possibly even the actual choice by Marvel. Also, there's also uh, strong rumors that Jodie Comer from Free Guy. She was awesome in that movie. Yeah. I don't really know much about her as an actor, but she was great in that. So what's interesting is that Marvel, they've been known to kind of cast actors that aren't particularly well known. I would say the majority of actors. I mean, of course, you still have Samuel L. Jackson and like Robert Downey Jr. But even Robert Downey Jr. at the time, that guy was like, <laughs> he was not... I mean, he was known for, you know, getting passed out drunk. Like, yeah. that's what he was, you know, at the time. But now, he, yeah, going to jail. Yeah. And now he completely changed his life around. And mm-hmm. Marvel, I mean, he credits his wife and also put the Marvel franchise. I mean, they really changed yeah. his entire career. Man, amazing that he was able to turn his life around and, and become yeah. the actor that he was born to be. If you think about it, like going back, the actors that originally came on, like Chris Evans, he got paid $500,000 for the first Captain America really? movie. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. he was actually a little bit more well-known because he was in the original Fantastic Four films. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and that, that was interesting, right? They're like, yeah. I mean, what vision? Incredible vision by Marvel to say, you know what? Even though you're in those terrible f-ing movies, <laughs> we still believe in you as an actor. Yeah, we want you exactly. to be Captain America. That is so epic. Super epic. Here's your second chance. Yeah. I mean, look at Michael B. Jordan. Same thing, right? He was yeah. in the second version of the Fantastic Four. Then he went and played Eric Killmonger. Yeah, and Black Panther. Interesting. Yeah, I'm 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 very excited to see what, who they decide to go with for both for all four of the actors. Really cool. Yeah. They did. They also made an announcement for the writers. Writing duo Jeff Kaplan and Ian Springer. They are Jeff Kaplan. Actually, I know Jeff Kaplan. Yeah. 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 He's worked on a few things. Yeah. So I looked at his IMDb. I didn't personally recognize anything. They're not particularly well known, but they have done a lot of uh, projects that were purchased recently mm. so apparently yeah. like, they're really hot in the industry um yeah. but one of the so. projects that was purchased was by warner brothers and it's a comedy called disaster wedding and it's going to be directed by the director of palm springs the Hulu oh, film. Wow. yeah that was with uh that was with andy sandberg great movie i didn't see that oh dude it was awesome oh, no. I, is it good you haven't you haven't seen it either Mm-mm. oh yeah you guys gotta see that it's so funny it's really good it's really nice. really good just jump into it don't even look at the trailer gotcha. just watch it these characters are going to be around the mcu for a long long time long long time at least probably for the next 10 plus years yeah. i would think the studio is very much keen on getting this right <laughs> yeah, I, I i i think they're very much well i think everything hinges on this i mean you're introducing also a very popular villain into the mcu victor von doom yeah i mean that is tied directly to fantastic four so there's a lot riding on this so are we gonna see silver surfer in the upcoming movie oh yeah i mean he's i mean yeah. probably not eventually, the first one but eventually, so. eventually yeah Absolutely. yeah eventually, eventually yeah. for sure yeah yeah isn't yeah. silver surfer also tied to galactus yes yeah 
Yeah. So, yeah, so. since I know we're going to get Galactus at some point, if we haven't already seen sneak previews of them already. I think Galactus will probably come in after the multiverse saga. Looking at Doctor Doom, the speculation that Henry Cavill is going to possibly play him. There's some strong yeah, speculation. An interesting choice. Yeah. I'm very curious who they decide to go with. I've heard yeah. so many different variations of actors who could yeah. potentially play him. To be honest, they're probably throwing na- every name out in the industry <laughs> for, yeah. for Victor Von Doom. So. I kind of hope they go with somebody that's not well known. Yeah. I really kind of want to see that, but we'll see. I mean, I, I have faith in their decisions, man. If you look at the past 10 years, look at all the, are there any actors you feel like, eh, they didn't deliver in Marvel? Don't look at the, don't think of the storyline. Just think of the actor performing a, oh, a character. Man. That's tough, right? Yeah, no, like, to be honest, yeah, Marvel, if there's anything they can be accredited to very well, it's the casting department. Yeah. The casting department is is absolutely solid. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I can't really think of anyone that I was like, "Mm, that's a good sign. I don't think that (laughs) is. That's a really good sign. (laughs) But also, I mean, Kevin, we were talking last night about this, right? Mm -hmm. Some of the things that they really got to keep an eye on. It's been kind of tough because... You know, when they first made, you know, 10 years of films, they were kind of organically creating this timeline, whereas yeah. now they have probably a 10-year plan, but they have to fit certain elements into their films now, so they have a lot of constraints. You know, yeah. you have to fit X characters here, you have to hit certain story beats here, and that's tough, yeah, man, when you're telling a story. It's yeah. kind of ironic when everyone says, oh, I feel like they don't have a direction they're going in right now. It's like, well, I think it's the exact opposite. I think they have too much of a direction they're going in right now. They're trying to force everything into this one thought process. And it's like, well, these other films they made, you know, they changed things, outfits, the way the characters are and who they are. They were sort of building this franchise organically together, as you said. And now, though, they're like, no, we have to introduce this. We have to do this. We have to have this. And it's like, you kind of see that, like in Multiverse of Madness, you saw that sort of like, we have to force this thing into this direction. You're like, oh, man. That kind of sucks. Especially the end credit scene. Yeah. Oh, yeah. End credits especially have just become that. It's just like, we're introducing this character now. It's like, well, why? What's the (laughs) point and purpose? Before, it was just there to be like, you you have to wait two years to find out. (laughs) Exactly. Or like, here's this character. He might show up. We don't know. Now it's like, no, we have to set this whole thing up, this whole system to get to this film 10 years down the line. It's like, all right, come on. Yeah. And there's not a lot of room for creativity in that. I think that's the the only issue with having that kind of a singular vision. And I hope yeah. that Matt Shackman can actually get past that. I hope they let him be as you know imaginative as he can be. Like the first three to four episodes of WandaVision, I f***ing love. I love that a lot. I think it looked great. It was so mysterious and weird. Mm-hmm. Like it really showed off a creative vibe. But then all of a sudden it had to turn into the classic Marvel thing of introducing this character and the heroes and they have to fight and they have to go into the CGI battlefield. And don't forget to introduce this character, which will lead into this character. It's like, Oh, come on, man. (laughs) Yeah. The the witch Agatha, which they're eventually Mm -hmm. turned into a show that was announced at San Diego comic-con. It's like, okay, well that's why they had to force the character in. Mm -hmm. And really the tension was about Wanda, you know, and, Mm -hmm. I don't even really remember what Agatha's like purpose was for that series. She's just an honest. old witch who was just an evil witch. That's she's an evil yeah. old witch. But now they're making a whole series about her, and it's like, okay, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, and like, I was, look, I love Catherine Hahn, the actress. Oh, she's I awesome. So, yeah, she's so amazing. I'm excited she's amazing. for her to do more stuff, but it's like the character itself is just like, ah, why? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I want to be very clear about that. She's an amazing actor. I absolutely adore her. I think she's hysterical, yeah. and also she mm-hmm. she's a really good dramatic actor. So I'm excited to see her range in Marvel, yeah. but or in the MCU. But yeah, it just felt a little forced for character. Yeah. But we'll see. I'm pumped about this news. He's a relatively new director to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but he's done a great job so far, and he has a lot of experience. And apparently, he's an awesome guy with who's great with people and his crew. So yeah, he's everything you hope for. And and John Watts, I hope he does come back to the MCU. I think he will eventually. He spent. Like what eight years on nothing but Spider-Man films. He deserves he a break. break. Yeah. He did he did a great job. He deserves a break. <laughs> and what's really exciting too is now looking at the Fantastic Four One comic and like Fantastic Four Five. Again, we talk about speculation when it comes to these comics, right? So yeah. Fantastic Four One, the very safe floor with big upside. Fantastic Four Five, very safe floor with big upside. 
These are spec books. These are Grail comics that are also spec books. That's crazy. That's crazy. So when we look at at Vivi right now, the current state of the market, you're looking at these comics and like Fantastic Four number one, you can get a comic for about 35 gems, 40 gems, which is an amazing opportunity. Yeah. I mean, the floor for that comic, the very low grade, a 0.5 grade of that comic is around eight grand, $8,000. So to say that these could hit all-time highs again, potentially going up to 500, 600, 700 dollars. I don't think it's unrealistic, especially when worldwide adoption happens with these oh, comics. Yeah. So totally agree. So as for the movie, it's going to be released in November of 2024, so we still have a lot of time. Who knows where these prices are going to be by then, but <laughs> very excited for this uh, film to, to hit theaters. Yeah, man. I, again, I think that Marvel's riding a lot on this one, so I'm hoping they put all the best efforts into it and all the best people, so we're, we're cautiously optimistic. Thanks so much for stopping by, everybody. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Let us know your thoughts on Matt Shackman as the new director of the Fantastic Four, and we will see you on the next one.